Mick here, hello and welcome to the vlog. Uh, also welcome to the new common room. This is a new space that Dan and I are sort of putting together with the hope that we can do something called experience days uh, where people can come along and hang out for the day and muck about and do stuff. Not entirely sure what it's gonna be yet, but um, <laughs> we have high hopes that it will happen. So yeah, this is the common room. It's also where Dan uh, will be doing his pedal board builds before uh, we film shows. But what I'm here to talk about today are two hollow body guitars that I own. This is a 2017 Epiphone Casino that I bought for a show that Dan and I did where we needed to find some more affordable gear. And for those of you interested in these things, uh, the very helpful site at guitarinsight.nl has a serial number decoder that told me that it's made in the Chinese factory, uh, I don't know if I say this right, but Qingdao. Um, yeah. I changed the pickups in it a couple months back and the wiring loom to some Lola Dog Ear P90s and if you want to see that whole vlog it's also on this channel. Meanwhile this is a 2016 Gretsch Electromatic G5422 TG. Again according to guitarinsight.nl, very useful website, um, it was made in the SPG factory in Korea, whatever that means. To me SPG was always the um, hamster in the young ones, but moving on. See you Jimmy. Anyway. I'd always wanted a Gretsch because they're such incredibly cool guitars. <laughs> um, but I just never had the guts to drop the cash on, on a higher end one. So when the Electromatic models came out um, and certainly when they upgraded them, I think the 2016 was, uh, was an upgrade year. I was actually doing some videos in the Andersons channel at that time with Danish Pete. We were doing demo videos and one of these came in and we demoed it. And I was like, wow, I really, really like that guitar. Few weeks went past, I think, I was like, yeah, actually, do you know what? I'd like to get one of those. So I phoned up Lee and said, is it still there by any chance? And he said, no, they'd sold that one. So um, I called my friend Adam, who just happens to be the product manager of Gretsch in the UK, and he made it so. So clearly these guitars aren't the same thing at all, but they do share some interesting similarities and differences. Let's have a look at that. Most obviously, they're both semi-acoustic, they're both almost entirely hollow, they're both double cutaway, and they're both laminate maple bodies. The Gretsch has a rim depth of two and a quarter inches, and the Casino is half an inch thinner at one and three quarter inches. The Casino has a set mahogany neck with a scale length of 24 and three quarter inches. That's 628.6 something millimeters. The Gretsch has a set maple neck over a marginally shorter scale length of 625 millimeters, which I think is 24.6 inches. It also has a rosewood fingerboard. The Gretsch has a big speed vibrato, while the Casino has a trapeze tailpiece. They both have tunematic style bridges, but the Gretsch is on a wooden plate uh, that has locating pins so it doesn't slide around. As I explained earlier, the Casino now has Lola Dog Ear P90 single coil pickups. In the Gretsch is a modern remake of the Blacktop Filtertrons, which came along in the mid 60s, I think, when Baldwin owned Gretsch. And here's where it gets really interesting because by the end of this video, the Gretsch will have a pair of TV Jones T Armand single coil pickups fitted. Much more on that later. So let's start with the guitars as they are. Uh, I'm gonna go over to the other room and we can just hear him back to back.
I'm not sure there's much point continuing because the difference between the two guitars is vast. The, the Epiphone is, well, to my ears, almost twice as loud, certainly a, a lot more gainy. Um, this guitar really isn't putting out very much at all, which is not a bad thing. It's just to say that it, it does it is lackluster in the way that I remember it being. But as you heard in one of the playing examples, that doesn't mean it can't sound cool. It just means it doesn't really have the push and the oomph that um, maybe I want from it. I'll just try some neck pickup stuff uh, just to just to see. No pedals or anything. <laughs> I mean, the strings have got a little bit more play on them in these. So the strings are a little bit older, but it's the difference is staggering. It's much more than strings. <laughs> The Gretsch with its lower output and slightly smoother response definitely sounds sweeter in, in some settings, but it lacks the kind of edge and punch and poke that the Epi's got. And of course, then it all comes down to settings of pedals and amps and stuff. On that last example, it was just delay and reverb, so no gain involved. I'll just do one more. I'll turn the, um, I'll turn the Tweedy and the Tube Screamer on so we get like a lead guitar sound. <laughs> Super interesting. I'm just going to turn the bridge pickup down just to see what the cleanup is like uh, with no pedals on. Let's do no pedals. <laughs> Down to about six.
Yeah, so using this volume, it was just Mud City. Everything went away, no brightness remains. Um, yeah, the tone completely goes away. Using this volume, it's slightly better. This is a master volume. I think it might have a treble bleed on it, but still, you know, a lot goes away, not much high-end retained. So it'll be interesting to see how that changes with the T Armands and the new Loom. Okay, um, really don't think we need to do very much more. The guitars sound vastly different. Wasn't expecting them to sound the same, um, but clearly the Epiphone is by no means a kind of powerful modern guitar, but it, to use a unpleasant phrase, it eats this for breakfast in terms of um, punch, clarity, sustain, all of those things. So let's see what the T Armand brings. So to my mind, at this point, the Epi really has the edge. Um, the pickups are just so much more alive, so much more present. The guitar has a great deal more dynamic range. There's so much more ability in the volume and tone controls. Um, and while the Gretsch has some cool sounds going on, don't get me wrong, I don't think it sounds bad, but it just doesn't have the life and kind of, I just don't want to play it in the way that I want to engage with the casino. And actually it's fair to say, I felt fairly similar about the casino before the pickup swap in that. So logic to me says the Gretsch needs a really good kick in the pickups. So maybe the most obvious choice for the Gretsch would be a nice set of Filtertron remakes, such as those that TB Jones makes. That's the humbucking pickup designed by Ray Butts for Chet Atkins all the way back in the mid fifties. And there's really nothing like a Filtertron pickup sonically or visually. They're a bona fide classic and they have a thing that's all their own. But, but to my ears personally, just purely personally speaking, I've always kind of preferred the single coil D. Armand style pickup. They were called D. Armand Dynasonics and they still feature uh, in a number of Gretsch models. They preceded the Filtertron. That was in the majority of Gretsch guitars before 1957, 1958. To be a bit reductive about it, my experience of Dynasonics and Filtertrons to date is the Dynasonics have a bit more attack. They have less drop off in the mid. They're kind of punchier. Um, they don't compress in the same way. Um, Filtertrons can be a bit polite with gain, uh, whereas the Dynasonics, punchy I think is the word I would use. And as much as I really love classic humbuckers of that period, be they PAFs or Filtertron style pickups, uh, regular viewers of TPS will know that my heart beats with a single coil. Now then, how to choose the pickups. Lots of modern manufacturers make Dynasonic style pickups, um, but I think it's only right to look at TV Jones first. Uh, Tom Jones, it's not unusual, really is the first word in modern Gretsch style pickups. Um, what that company doesn't know about vintage Gretsch guitars and vintage Gretsch pickups literally isn't worth knowing. So I hit their website. Oh my God. <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> Who knew there were so many variants, so many different mounts, so many different types of, you know, modern Filtertrons and this and that and the other P90 style mounts, humbucker mounts, blah, 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 blah. So I did some research uh, and after a lot of Googling, um, and working through the information on TV Jones website. I was a little more informed, however, uh, not being entirely confident. I just banged off an email to customer service saying, look, I've got this guitar and I want some T almonds. Please tell me which ones to buy and any bits that I need to make it fit. And thankfully they came back to me really quickly and said, you need this, Sonny. And then $502 and 48 cents later, I'd made the order. Ouchie. That would be two pickups in gold, don't you know? Uh, a complete wiring harness with the three pots and then the other pot and a switch. And also two little things that I needed to make the pickups fit in the mounts that are in the guitar currently. Lo and behold, I needed something called the English mount and an extra little bit of metal to make it work. And then very helpfully, I got an email saying, yes, you've ordered all this stuff, but did you know your switch tip won't fit on the new switch? Would you like us to include one? I'm like, wow, thanks very much. They're like, yeah, that's seven bucks, please. <laughs> Fair enough, $509.48. They better sound good. Righty-ho then, here's the bit I've been putting off. Um, I've been putting it off so much, it is now quarter to five. I've got to go and pick the dog up. 
in about 45 minutes, so there's no way I'm going to get this done today. TV Jones has got a fantastic video uh, via their YouTube channel, or maybe from their website, can't quite remember which, detailing this process, so you don't need, need to go through it in, in uh, <laughs> the painful detail I went through it in last time. So what I'm going to do is just sort of do some highlights. I'm going to talk about things like, do the pots fit? Um, what is the best method for getting the wires in and out? Ooh. Nice. So it came to pass. I love it when it's all wired up. Look at that. Switch. Pots. No fancy paper and oil caps here. Just standard old bog standard uh, orange drops. Top tip number one when doing anything like this. Have a quick recce of all the little tools you're going to need. Otherwise you spend ages searching for them. I am pleased to say the knobs fit on the pots. Happy days. Let's gut it. If you're wondering what this uh, little fluffy thing I have it on is, uh, it's a universal audio blanket. <laughs> Had some great presents over the years. Uh, they usually happen in the holiday period. And, uh, people send you nice things. And uh, yeah, it's a blanket. <laughs> As regular viewers will know, I, I'm never that careful with guitars and finishes and stuff. It's really there more to protect the table. <laughs> it's the, the new table you see in our common room. Do you like the live music sign? Catherine ordered that. We live in hope. One little questionette I have is whether the pots are going to fit. Um, Viewers of a nervous disposition will remember fondly me drilling out the casino in the last video. These don't fit either, so I'll have to drill the Gretsch out. I just discovered that the voice mic wasn't recording. <laughs> You'd think, wouldn't you, after doing this for so long we get used to it. Um, so there'll be rubbish audio off one of the cameras. Uh, who knows, might not be rubbish at all. Uh, right. Got blimey ease on there. Goodbye, Mr. Switch. The pit guard's got to come off because uh, I can't get to all the mount screws for the um, for the pickups there. So this is coming off. Okay, right, pickups. Oh my god! Oh my god! Look at that! Actual connectors to save soldering. Jack socket still attached. There's me thinking, wow, this is way too easy. Ah, uh, okay. So there's a gr there is a ground wire. So where is the ground wire soldered to? So there's a ground wire that goes back to what looks like the end pin or the back of the Bigsby or something. Um, and it goes all the way back to the back of the guitar. And uh, it's a bit of a challenge because it's not long enough to pull out with all the rest of the stuff. So, oh, I don't mean pliers. I'm going to pull it out through the F hole and tape it onto the top of the guitar so that I don't lose it. There we have it, the old wiring harness, complete with uh, those kind of pickup connectors. I do have a guitar full of various washers. And that's a wrap for today. I think um, it's quarter past five. I've got to go and pick the dog up. Maybe chance a glass of wine. And yeah, we'll, we'll revisit this tomorrow, hopefully. Although we do have the dog tomorrow, so that might be Anyone who has a dog and thinks all this talk of having the dog is ridiculous. She's a puppy, so um, she's a little bit more work than, a, than an older dog. Uh, and needs constant care. And she's brilliant. <laughs> Actually, she is brilliant. Uh, I've, uh, on a serious note, she, I keep saying that she is the little black dog that 
helps immensely with the big black dog. <laughs> Remember I said earlier, I said, please just send me the stuff I need to, um, so that it will just work. Well, here you go. This is TV Jones's English mount. As you can see, it's got two ears on the pickup there. And if we look at this one, it's got two screws on one side and one screw on the other. Whereas the TV Jones one only has one screw each side. Therefore, now it makes sense. You need this um, extra little bit of stuff to mount the pickup in the ring. So what do we got? We've got a spring, a screw and a long screw. There's a little diagram with the short screw light side facing down. Where's my phone? I'm just going to Google a picture of a nice Gretsch a minute. Yes, as I thought, the the adjustment screws face in and the pole pieces are on the outside. Tap to TV Jones. Attach the short screw included with the light coloured side face down, dark solid colour side face up. Where have you gone, small screw? There you are. So as you can see, um, in order to hit, hit these two holes in this ring on the top there, that adapter allows that to happen. That is cool. So, yes, twang. See you tomorrow. Morning. Uh, right, it's not the next day, it's the day after. It's actually Saturday today. Uh, had some pesky work to do yesterday. Let's pick it up then. I've got what I need, coffee. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> after all that chat about making sure the pickup went in the ring the right way, I've put it in the wrong way. <laughs> I've put it in so that the, the two screws should be at the top, not at the bottom, so we'll change that and we'll mount the neck one in there. Some other things to reflect on before I start. I found this, an old N-pin reamer that I've used on a few um, electroacoustics, well, acoustics turning into electroacoustics over the years, which you use for the N-pin uh, jack socket. In the last video when I did the casino, I used a drill and a lot of people were like, don't do that. So, um, I mean, it's, it's pretty sharp and I think it will. What I should get is just a, a regular hand reamer, right? Which has got a little T-bar on the top, but I don't have one of those. So um, I'll just use that and I'll do it to the depth that it needs to go. I'll then wrap some tape around it um, at the depth that it needs to be at. That's one thing. Secondly, in the last video, I was going through all kinds of gymnastics, trying to tie bits of thread onto the pots because what you have to do, as I explained earlier, you have to feed the wiring harness all in through there and then locate it in the guitar, which is a bit of a challenge. So um, the old school way, of, or at least the way I knew of doing it, was tying bits of thread on the old pots when you take them out and then tie them back onto the new pots so you can thread them back through. Uh, in the video with um, TV Jones, which I explained I was going to go home and revise on, he uses this tubing stuff which you can feed down into the holes and through, and it's just the right diameter to be a tolerance fit. I promise you it is, you just need to push it on there. A tolerance fit on the pot so that you can pull it through. Um, but before I found this, uh, I couldn't find any of that stuff, so I got, got some of this stuff which is like surgical tubing, like catapult elastic, which I bought from um, Amazon. And uh, lo and behold, the diameter is too small and I can't stretch it enough to get over the end of the pot. I'm sure if you heated it, you could, but anyway, I happen to be buying some barbecue gas in the British institution that is Halfords. Uh, for anyone that doesn't know, Halfords is a shop that sells things like car batteries and bulbs and barbecue gas and bicycles and bits for tents and all that kind of stuff. Um, anyway, I was in there buying barbecue ga gas and I said to the guy, I don't suppose you've got any plastic tubing, have you? And he was that particular kind of awesome guy that I want to be 
which is he knew every single product and part number that they had in that store. And he said, yeah, actually we do. We've got this stuff. Um, and if you want it in longer lengths, go to uh, a place that does tropical fish supplies because people who are into fish tanks and aquariums use it. I don't know what for, but they use it. So he said, if you need it in longer than 2.4 meters, go there, but we don't. So, so I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna prepare all of that and then we'll be back uh, once that's done. Let's just see if this reamer, if I'm gonna need to attach. How deep is it? So it's gonna go a little bit deeper. Now, ideally you do this by hand, uh, but it's a sharp tool, unlike me. <laughs> Super sharp. What I can do now is just measure the depth that it went to Put a bit of tape around it so I know how deep to go on the others. It's really lovely and sharp that tool so uh, there, uh, at no point was I in any fear whatsoever that it was going to crack the top or really harm the finish. Let's check the switch is going to fit. Boom! Holes drilled. When I come back, uh, I'll have all the tubing put in and we can hopefully locate everything. See you in a sec. Okay, here's an interesting revelation. Um, I was just sorting out these mounting rings. As I explained earlier, I got it the wrong way around. I thought, I'll just check the pickups, check the DC resistance on the pickups to see which is which. I noticed that one has a gray wire Uh, and one has a black wire and I'm thinking right okay that must be neck and bridge I thought I'll just check the DC resistance of them so here's the one here's the one that came out of the neck box it says neck on it 11.7 12k something like that here's the one that came out of the bridge box 8.3, 8.4. So I'm going, hang on a minute, that's not right. I had a quick look on the TV Jones website and lo and behold, yes, the bridge one, in all their photos anyway, has the black wire and the neck one has the gray wire. So whether I have managed to take them out of the box and put them back in the wrong boxes, I'm so glad I checked that. Imagine if I'd got them in back to front. Ugh. Okay, so I've done all that. I've attached the um, pickup rings to the correct pickups. I'm now gonna just do the soldering. Thankfully, it's very minimal soldering, just two connections, uh, one, two for each pickup, plus um, the ground wire, and that's it. Let's look at this logically then. We know the switch has got to go up there. We know the volume control's got to go down there. Neck, thankfully, they've marked them, marked the controls. So neck pickup bridge pickup, jack and tone. So in terms of the order that it's gonna get inserted into the guitar, I guess the jack, yeah, the jack and the tone pot are gonna go in first. <laughs> I don't know which is which. I don't know what the correct layout for the pots is. <laughs> so here's the neck pickup, which needs to go onto the neck pot, which is this one. So the hot wire goes in the middle and the ground wire goes on the case. I tell you what else I'm going to do. I'm going to put a little um, cable tie around here, just to keep that to keep that um, in better condition than it might otherwise be, just with the pickup wire flapping about. So I've got some little cable ties somewhere. Yeah, I've got some little cable ties somewhere. He said, turn the whole place upside down. Managed to find three. <laughs> I thought I had a whole bag of them somewhere. When you're manhandling pots in and out of a guitar like this, you know. Naturally, there's going to be a little bit of uh, a strain on the connections and stuff. So if we can minimize that, especially in the event of me getting something wrong and having to take it all apart. So uh, we'll just we'll just 
no doubt one runs, runs the risk of adding complication and something that's going to get tangled on something. So I guess we'll, we'll discover that in due course. Okay, a moment of truth of sorts. Um, I've wired both the pickups on. So it should work at this point. Um, selector switch, where are you? I haven't got the earth wire attached yet. Okay, bridge pickup, uh, tone control. Tone control works. Neck pickup. Great, tone control. Great, that works. Master volume. Ooh. Both pickups. Well, I wasn't expecting it not to work. Um, it worked, hooray. So we can put it all in the guitar now. Uh, I did make something of a schoolboy error with the <laughs> neck pickup in that I managed to wire the neck pickup outside of the guitar, which meant the wire would have had to have gone over the top because I was gonna stuff it all through the bridge pickup thing. But luckily, um, this whole assembly, I was able just to put it in through the bridge pickup um, hole and come out and there. So that's fine. <laughs> that was a tiny bit of brain work required, but no biggie. So we get our four neck pickup screws. Um, unless I'm being really dumb, I'm pretty sure that can, that can just be put in there. I'll just put two screws in so that, um, if it's got to come out again, it's not the end of the world. <laughs> so I think the first thing is going to be the jack and the tone pot because the tone pot sits back here and the jack obviously sits back in there. So they're the furthest things away. Um, now, uh, TV Jones uses a dowel to attach to the jack. I've actually got a little lead um, with a shrink wrapped jack on the end of it, which We'll go through the hole and I can feed that up there and attach it to the jack socket so I can pull that through. Now I've got to use my bits of pipe to put in so that I can attach to the pots. So let's see, I've never done this before, this is new. In we go. Oh, Mr. Taylor, pass me the scalpel. He's bleeding out. Right, let's cut that off. Hopefully I'm going to leave myself with enough tube. So that gets attached to the tone pot, which is that one. What about orientation then? When it goes in, it needs to be orientated kind of like that, I think. So... Obviously you need to be a little bit careful of the connections on the back of the pots. Don't want to damage anything, he said, manhandling it into position. Person handling it into position. Put that on there. Push it on. Okay. I guess I can pull it back out again if it, if it doesn't want to go. So what have we got there? New jack. I mustn't forget this blooming bridge wire, which is going to have to come. So I can get that. Hilarious schoolboy error number one. Uh, don't forget to take the lock nuts off the blinking pots. What a silly Billy. Sun's coming out as well. Let's try that again then, shall we? Success. The sun is massively overexposing everything, but I'm going to take it as a sign because we've got the first pot on. Oh, I don't believe it. I've got to ring the jack socket out as well. I thought I did check the jack socket. Aggravating. Okay. Now we're in the game. So now the uh, bridge and neck volume pots. 
have to say, the tubing <laughs> is a winner. Hard to know. Yeah, I mean, there's... I've done it again. I didn't take the flipping... Ah! Dozy, 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 dozy. What a giant plonker I am. I didn't take the flipping nuts off again. Oh, silly boy. So the bridge pickup is going to be the last thing to go in. So now we need tubing for the switch uh, and this pickup then, don't we? So get two bits of tube. Just touch and go there for a while. Come on. Oh, I see. That's got a really long thing on it. Oh, 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 oh my God. Bonk, bonk. There's some wiring to tidy up in there, but you know what? It's not too bad. Bingo. It works, it all works. I'm, I'm kind of slightly amazed because there is a lot of man handling, person handling involved uh, to get all that in there. There is a bit of tidying up to be done in the F hole here. Um, pick up height adjustment, helpfully TV Jones includes, which shows you the uh, ideal um, way that the pole pieces should be staggered. Five thirty seconds on the bridge pickup and three sixteenths on the neck pickup. So let's see. Interesting. Interesting. It is with something of a sigh that I say now comes the really difficult part. Strings. Yes. Uh, Dan strings on a guitar of this scale length. 11 to 52. So the reason it's such a pain is because you've got these flipping posts, right? On the older uh, tailpiece there. And the strings have to go hook on the post, go around the post, across the bridge and up to the tuners. And of course they ping off the second you, you do it. So uh, I'm gonna turn off for that. We're strung up.
Wow. What an unbelievable transformation. Okay, that was just the, that, I promise you that was the first time I've plugged it into these amps. I set, I set it up, I put some graphite in the nut slots just so the Bigsby would work a bit better, set the intonation, because it hadn't been done in a while. And that was literally the first time I turned the amps on. Oh my God, what a difference. Okay, let's get into some straight um, Casino uh, and Gretsch comparisons then. Um, and just see where we are. M my brain is telling me that the guitar has got back an enormous amount of punch, um, considerable volume. So I'll turn all the pedals off, just going to hear a few open chords on the bridge pickup. <laughs> Epi still sounds louder, got a bit more punch. Let's try some neck pickup lead stuff.
interesting. It's so much pokier than it was before. So much pokier. Really nice. Uh, middle position. <laughs> Yeah, Epi's louder and triblier, which is somewhat of a surprise. Might say something for the mid push of those um, pickups. Uh, let's try some gain on the bridge pickup. Uh, see what happens there. Yeah, the P90s definitely still have more poke and um, and clarity, so it remains a politer, a more polite guitar. Um, just as a last little comparison, I'm going to turn the volume down and see what the cleanup is like and also how much kind of high end is retained. Um, I'll do this with the Klon on and off. So uh, here's with the Klon off. We'll stay on the bridge pickup and just see.
Blimey. Um, if you've made it this far, I don't know, see a psychiatrist or something. <laughs> uh, it's been about two weeks, I think, and um, just finding a couple of hours here and there to do the pickup swap, to listen to the guitars, to do the recording. And then the small idiot that lives, the large idiot that lives in my brain said, hey, why don't you do a track, put these guitars in context. <laughs> so I did that at the end. I have no idea where that came from. It, actually, maybe um, there's a twanging guitar, reverby, tremolo-y, those kind of sounds, which I always think about when I'm thinking about Gretsch guitars, put me very much in mind of Bond and the, you know, the Vic Flick kind of sound. So maybe there's a bit of spy theme uh, in the track at the end. Anyway, it was good fun and uh, I'm pleased I did it. The more I play it, the more the casino with the Lollas is definitely the guitar that kind of pushes a bit harder, it's brighter, it's more open sounding. Um, and actually having used it in the show a couple of times now, it, it, it's one of the few guitars that kind of can stand next to red. So it really is a pokey guitar. The Gretsch is definitely more laid back sounding, sounds a bit sweeter, whatever that means. Um, the envelope of the note is, is different. And to me, surprise, surprise, it just sounds more like a hollow body Gretsch and way more so now it has the TV Jones pickups. I do have a really annoying ground or static problem that's developed. Uh, you can hear it a little bit in some of the playing examples and I think I've traced it to the ground wire that goes back to the tailpiece, so I need to fix that. And what about the things I've probably overlooked? Maybe some of the things you've commented on in this video so far. First of all, pickup height. Most of you will know that how high your pickups are in relation to the strings makes a massive difference in how the guitar sounds. And I think I probably could have been a bit more forensic about that with the TV Jones. The lollers in the casino are fixed. You can raise the pole pieces up and down, but the actual height of the pickup itself is kind of set um, because the pickup bodies are screwed to the top of the guitar. With the Gretsch, there's quite a lot of scope for adjustment because not only can you adjust the height of the pickup itself in the body of the guitar, but you can also adjust each pole piece. So as I say, I could have been a bit more forensic about that maybe, but what I'd rather do is sort of set it, for want of a better term, factory standard, which is what it is now, and then learn a bit about the guitar and make any adjustments with a desired outcome in mind. So if I listen to the guitar and I say, hmm, maybe that bridge pickup needs to be a little bit less strident sounding, or the neck pickup is too loud, or the G string is too quiet, you know, actually have a reason to make the adjustment before I make it, that will probably teach me a little bit more about where I like it best, and that will happen over coming months. Also, the volume and tone controls on the Gretsch probably could have got into them a little bit more than I did, um, truth be told, on the casino, that guitar really lives in the subtle adjustments of its volume and tone controls. There's so much colour in there, whether it's the 50s wiring or I don't know what it is, but it really does live um, in those adjustments. The Gretsch, I think, to me, on first listen anyway, and next to the casino, is just a bit lacklustre on anything less than full mumbo. Part of that could be down to the bridge pickup. As I said at the top of the video, my experience with Dynasonics, um, I've heard them in quite a lot of guitars, but I don't think I've ever had a guitar with one in. No, I haven't. So my actual experience is, is pretty limited. However, what I've discovered is that that bridge pickup does have quite a girthy mid-range. And to me, it reminds me of when I hear an overwound Strat or Tele bridge pickup, quite a strong, strong mid-range. And... Uh, when you turn that down a bit, you, you don't get the sparkle in the same way that you do with the P90s or indeed um, certain Stratton Tele pickups. Nevertheless, the Gretsch is transformed with the new pickups, um, which isn't to say the old ones were bad, the blacktop filtertrons, and that it couldn't sound good in certain environments, but it didn't get used a lot in shows, and I didn't play the guitar a lot because every time I picked it up, it was just so... It just couldn't stand up to most of the other guitars, especially Dan's Red, which is the guitar he plays most, his telly. It was just totally lost next to that guitar. Moving on, I didn't even mention the neck joints. So one thing that really sets a casino out, apart from the hollow body, one thing that really sets the casino out against something like an ES-335 is the fact that the neck is set further into the body. It joins the body at the 16th fret, which means there are fewer accessible frets. The Gretsch joins at the 18th, and while two frets might not sound very much, think about how much difference that two frets would make on an acoustic guitar, for example. Um, either a 12th fret or a 14th fret join on an acoustic guitar, it really does make a world of difference because it puts the bridge in a different place. Um, that said, 
the casino is the guitar that I'm kind of drawn to to play lead guitar on. Um, apart from the fact I don't really go at the dusty end anyway, there's not really anything up there for me on, on most guitars. Um, so the access isn't an issue, but maybe it's something about the neck shape. Uh, maybe it's something about the fact that it's not quite as hollow as the Gretsch. Maybe it's the Bigsby. I don't know. I just felt drawn to playing more single note stuff and lead stuff uh, on the casino. But I don't know. Quite clearly, I could talk about this for days. Um, what's going to be more interesting is hearing the guitars over coming months on the show. To come back to the original question, you know, Casino or or Gretsch 5422TG, if I get the model name right. Um, I think what became apparent as the video went on, and even I got bored of comparing them part of the way through, you know, they're such different beasts, despite their ostensible similarities. Um, and hopefully one or both of the guitars will speak to you in a way that you like that tone. And maybe if you are thinking about this kind of decision, it might help in some way. For me, I'm really pleased I've got both flavors and I know exactly the kind of thing I'm gonna to go to each of these guitars for. Cost-wise, I dare say I could have done it considerably cheaper had I found a British manufacturer. So didn't go in for all the currency conversion, the uh, shipping costs, the VAT, the import charges that add, you know, what, probably 30% at least on by the time um, something from the US hits the UK. So I could have done it cheaper, but you know, TV Jones, it felt like the right way to go. That was the question in my head. 500 bucks, it's a lot of money. Um, is it a lot of money compared to a guitar that would cost you $2,000? I don't know. <laughs> um, it, for me, it's worth it because the guitar is playable. Um, it's great fun and I want to use it more. So there we go, thanks for watching. Um, first of all, thank you to everyone who's gone to that pedal show store and bought a t-shirt or something from us. That's how we fund this show uh, and keep it on the road. Secondly, to all our patrons on Patreon, thank you so much for your kindness and support of the show. Again, it's a big way in which we keep the show going. Thank you also to our exclusive preferred retailers. Um, click the description down, you can read more about that. And in the meantime, <laughs> I need to lie down. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you on the show on Friday for the main show, on Monday for VCQ, and for bits and bobs of vlogs, live stuff, and everything else we do at that pedal show. And breathe. See you next time.